Hi, it's Mr. Broadwater tonight, and tonight we're reading Chapter 8 of Mysteries According to Humphreys. This is Niles, and we're going to be reading together tonight. The Case of the Mysterious Messages Mamma Mia, what happened here? Aldo said as he pulled his cleaning cart into the room and looked around. I looked around too, and what I saw was almost as scary as Halloween. The room was a mess. On the floor were scraps of paper, yarn, buttons, keys, markers, and crayons. On top of the tables were scissors and overturned glue bottles, and there was glitter glistening on the floor like snow. Eek, 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 I squeaked. Boing, 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 Og twanged. <clears throat> Aldo leaned on his broom and shook his head. I can tell Miss Brisbane wasn't here today. She never leaves her room messy at the end of the day. That was for sure, I agreed. Aldo didn't have much time to talk. He was too busy sweeping and spraying and scrubbing and mopping up the room. He stopped when he saw the stack of cards. Oh, they're making cards for Miss Brisbane. Good idea, he said. I'd like to send her a card myself. Me too, I squeaked. Boing, boing, Audrey agreed. After the room was in order and the art supplies neatly stacked in Miss Brisbane's desk, Aldo took out his lunch and pulled up a chair close to Og's tank and my cage. When he finished eating, he went over to Miss Brisbane's desk, took a piece of paper and wrote something on it. He folded it in half. Then he wrote on a smaller piece of paper and stuck it on top of the folding paper. Now, the substitute will include my card with the others, Eldo said. Can you write one for me, I squeaked. Eldo usually seemed to understand me, but that night he didn't. Well, I've got to run, he said. I'll be late getting home tonight, and I have to study for a test. Then he looked around the room, but at least the room is clean. Yes, Eldo, you did a great job, I told him. I meant it too. Aldo is very, very, very good at his job. Thanks, Humphreys, Aldo said. He wheeled his cart out of the room and turned off the light. Luckily, a big full moon was making the room nice and bright. It had been a difficult day, but it was feeling brighter myself. Og, I think I'll check out those cards, I said, after Aldo's car left the parking lot, and maybe I'll get more clues about what happened to Miss Brisbane. Boing, boing, Og said. I'm not sure if he thought my idea was good or if he was just excited about his froggy food sticks. I took my usual path to get to Miss Brisbane's desk and had no trouble. I made it, Og, I told my friend who was splashing around in his tank. I looked up, up, up. The stack of the cards was about six hamsters high. There was a bright yellow card with sparkles near the bottom. It was sticking out a bit from the rest of the pile. So I decided to grab it and pull. That was a big mistake because as the cards came out of the stack, the whole pile tumbled down around me and on me. Luckily, paper doesn't weigh too much. I wasn't hurt, just surprised. Still, I now had the chance to look at all the cards and possibly gather more clues about Miss Brisbane's disappearance. The yellow card was Sparkles was from Rosie. The front had red hearts, bright buttons inside it. Miss Brisbane, I miss you the most. Come back. I'll pop a wheelie for you. Love, Rosie. The last part was the big red heart. I'm not sure Miss Brisbane would be happy to see Rosie pop a wheelie for her. That's a trick she could do with her wheelchair. But Miss Brisbane made her promise not to do it at school anymore. I guess Rosie just meant she'd be happy to see her teacher back in the classroom. Then I looked at the blue card. It was 
the small paw on the front was the drawing of a rocket. Inside it said, I hope you'll be launched back into room 26 soon. I miss you, Paul F. Eek! I squeaked. And Miss Bis Brin Brisbane been launched into outer space? Next, I looked at one that was bright pink. It had lots of fancy writing on the outside and the inside. Dear Miss B, when you come back to room 26, I promise to help you all the time. You don't have to worry anything because I'll be here for you now and forever. If you ever need something, please call me your true friend of all for all time, Holly. Thomas's card was covered with red, white, and blue yarn. It read, you are the best teacher in the universe, Thomas. Sometimes Thomas exaggerates, but the time I thought he was right. But I was shocked when I read what he wrote at the bottom. P.S. I am the best juggler in the class. I can juggle for hours without dropping a ball, just like my dad. That just wasn't true. Why did a nice boy like Thomas make up things like that? The next card was white in fancy purple letters. It said, Sometimes I forget things, but I never forget all the nice things you do for us. Come back soon. Love, Phoebe. I felt a little pain for Phoebe. She was forgetful, but she was also extremely nice. Kelsey's card had a drawing of a ballet dancer on it. Inside it said, Hope you're up on your toes soon. From Kelsey. There was a very plain orange card with blue letters, no glitter, no beads, no buttons. It said, I'm not good at fancy words, but I miss you. Just Joey. Joey's card was nice and simple. I knew Miss Brisbane would like it because it sounded like him. Oh, these cards are so nice. I shouted to my friend. Our friend did a great job. He splashed around in a happy sounding way. I read all of the cards. The more I read, the more I wished I could make a card for Miss Brisbane too. I looked over at the art supplies, markers, crayons, glitter, glue, a very nice looking card, but I knew they were also dangerous. At least to hamsters. Hamsters like me don't wash our paws and soap as water. In fact, soap and water aren't good for us at all. No, 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 we groom ourselves using our tongues and paws. I got glue or markers. If, so if I got glue or markers on my paws and licked it off, I might get very sick. Maybe I could make some pizza. Mr. Head suggested pizza. Pizza. Mr. E had suggested that. I looked and couldn't find any fair bottle marked pizza. I'd have to make a plain card, like just Joey's. I slowly went back to my cage. All the cards were great, but one stuck in my head. One stuck in my mind. Kelsey had hoped Miss Brisbane would be up on her toes soon. Up on her toes? That sounded like a clue. Was Mrs. Brisbane actually going to be a ballet dancer? I tried to imagine our teacher with her, her short gray hair and her sensible shoes twirling around like a ballerina. She did it look like a, the dancer in Kelsey's music box, but Miss Brisbane wanted to be a ballerina. Then that 
that's what she would be. Even though I think she makes a better teacher. I pulled out my little notebook and pencils from behind the mirror. First, I added a clue to my list. Clue five, Miss Brisbane may be learning to be a ballet dancer. I wasn't sure about that, so I added a couple of question marks. Next, I turned the page and thought about what to write to my teacher. I wanted to say just the right thing. I thought and I thought and I thought some more. Sometimes it's easier to say something you feel in your heart with a poem. And so I wrote, Roses are red, violets are blue. Oh, Miss Brisbane, how much I miss you. I looked at it over I, and liked it, so I signed it Humphrey. I read it to all, boing, 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 he twanged. Oops, sorry, all. I replied, then I added, Og to. I signed your name here to Og. I assured my name. He can't write. At least, I don't think he can write. He doesn't have a notebook. And if he did, it would have to be waterproof. I tore the page from the notebook. I looked at it, and it seemed a little too plain. I didn't know how to make it fancier. I looked around my bedroom, bedding and came up with a tiny piece of carrot. I'd say the strawberry Kelsey had brought. That was the juiciest strawberry I ever I have ever seen. I rubbed my paws all over the strawberry to get them nice and juicy. And I made red paw prints around the edge. It looked very nice. If I do say so myself. When I was finished, I licked the red juice off my paws. Yummy. Of course. Then I had to take the card over to the desk. I picked up the paper with my teeth jiggled the lock that doesn't lock and opened the door to my cage. Og splashed gently in his tank as I passed by. Oh, I said, of course. As soon as I opened my mouth, the paper dropped to the table. Sorry, Og, I said. I wish you could add your mark too. Bong, Og, boing, Og answered, splashing. Oh, or maybe you can. I'm leaving the card here, I explained. Then I'll go behind my cage, splash some water, and then I'll come back for the card. I left the paper near his tank, scurried away, and squeak. Now, I'll splash and splash some more. Not too much, I said. You can stop now. I waited until Og stopped splashing and raced back to the paper. There were several little watermarks on the paper. Now I hoped, hoped, hoped Miss Brisbane would know that Og had made them. I picked up the paper with my teeth again and made my second trip of the night down the table leg and back to the desk. The stack of cards was now a mound of cards. There was no way a small hamster could stack them all up again, so I just pushed my card into the pile. Then I made the long trek back to my cage and closed the door behind me. Morning light streamed in through the windows and I was worn out. Good night, Arv, I said as I crawled into my sleeping hut. I mean, good morning. I guess he was tired too because he didn't answer. Not even one boy, or if he did answer, it, I couldn't hear him because I was sound asleep. On free dictionary, finding clues can make you unsqueakably tired.